Hey everybody, welcome back. Live at Drew's house, job afternoon drive. Hope things are good for you out there. It's uh, uh, starting to feel like spring again. I think I've said that for like 20 shows in a row now. I'm just being optimistic. But no, spring is here. It's officially spring now, so there we go. Uh, we have Legally Blonde, pl musical playing over at Newburyport High School. Uh, and I get two performers from uh, that show in here right now. We got Declan Hawkeiser. And Lizzie Homer, how are you guys? Doing well. How Doing are you? Good. What thanks grades we? In? No, thanks for coming. What grades we in here? We are both juniors. Yes. Both juniors. All right. It's an exciting year, isn't it? Busy. Yeah. I liked junior year. You're right. It is busy. Senior year, you end up having some of the sliding into college. The senior slides. Yeah. Junior year is like the you get a lot done. Uh, Legally Blonde is the musical. How we doing? It's really fun. Like this show is. It's unlike anything we've done recently. So it's on. It's just so much fun to put on. It's awesome. so much fun. Super high energy. Um, it's honestly such a great show to be a part of, as well as watch. We've had so many good reviews from our friends and families, and it's just so exciting. Awesome. Cool. So we got a show tonight, Thursday, um, and then through the weekend, right? We got yes. weekend shows too? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. We had a wildly successful first weekend last weekend, and we have shows Thursday at 7, Friday at 7, and then Saturday at 2. How much time, how long have you been working on this for? We started in early December. Yeah. Early December. Yeah. Wow. These yeah. things are a project. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Yeah. We got really into it in January. Um, we haven't each been there every day, but everyone has a whole rehearse five days a week. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Five days a week, like um, pretty much since the holidays? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. definitely a process. That is incredible. All right, so what are you guys, what, what are your roles in it? I know the lot goes into these things, so. Um, I play the role of Serena. She is a mm. Greek chorus member that follows Elle Woods around the whole show, and we're there to support her and be her pep <laughs> crew. Okay. And I play Professor Callahan. I am one of the law professors at Harvard, and yeah, oh. I kind of mentor L throughout the story and some other things that I won't tell you just yet. Okay. So you two are the uh, the talent. How many people are behind the scenes here? We have 52 in total cast and crew members. I'm not okay. sure the exact numbers, but we do have a pretty extensive yep. group in each. And it's really, it is all hands on deck for all the pr practices and uh, practices. Is that, yeah, I guess? <laughs> rehearsals. Rehearsals, but. thank yeah. you. Sorry, I knew there was a different word out there. It's rehearsals, Drew, come on. Yeah. Um, but it's like a, pretty much a whole team effort every day, right? It's such a, it takes so many people to put on a show, and I'm not even sure people fully understand <laughs> yeah. like the amount of things that need to go on. And we have a lot of help from parents, too. Um, Eric Kelly yep. is his name. He's our friend's dad. He basically built the whole entire set for us. Oh, wow. And we have students that aren't even in the show that are still taking part of the process. Um, Kate Gilmore and Bella Martellucci are on the NHS cheer team, and they're helping out in some of the cheer numbers. Wow. And we have other students, um, Fiona Marino in particular, that choreographed a whole Irish step routine. Mm -hmm. So, like, it's really everyone, even people that aren't in the theater department, are contributing to this production. Wow. That now, is cool. Yeah, along with other students that one of our directors, Miss Zaleski, has, they've also been helping construct and paint the sets, which has been super helpful during the mm -hmm. day. That is great. What who who gets to choose like legally blonde? I know this was done a while ago, but does, is it a vote by No. <laughs> so our two fearless leaders, um, Lisa Zaleski and Stephanie Phillips, or we call them Phil and Z. Yes. Um, they um, so Phil, Stephanie Phillips, she directs and choreographs the shows and then mm -hmm. Z is our music director. And the two of them each year they pick the season. And they guide us throughout the process, but it really is super collaborative. Once we get into the show, yeah, we all like they are very actually they're very open to our input and our help. Mm -hmm. and we all really all put the process together. Okay, cool. And were you all happy with the choice? Were you uh, yeah. like, legally yeah. blonde? Were you, that does kind of seem. I, I definitely didn't do a production of Legally Blonde with my high school. I remember that's a, that kind of a different. Did it feel like a different choice, or I don't know. You're always kind of taking different risks. Very different. Very different. Okay. Last year we put on. It makes me feel better. <laughs> yeah, last year we put on Fiddler on the Roof, which is a totally different vibe, totally yeah. different time period. A little bit more classic, though. Like a lot a of schools classic. have done that over yeah. time. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. And it was great, but this year we really just needed something that is super fun and upbeat and exciting, and. Yeah, it's definitely different. I wouldn't even say. And this is like that that movie, like when uh, yeah. I think it came out. Do you guys know what year it came out? Four, I believe. I was gonna say that. Yeah, that was when I was in high school. Yeah. Yeah, with Reese Witherspoon. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And wow. I think. Do, do you have to go watch the movie? I've seen it once throughout this process, yeah. but you, had, actually... you hadn't seen it before. No, I, I've seen it before. It's a classic. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good, but um, yeah. 
it's a little bit different. There are some changes in the story of the musical, but yeah, as always, right? it's the same story. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that must be, is it, uh, was it kind of rejuvenating to do something? I mean, Fiddler on the Roof is great too, yeah. but it's like to do something that's kind of a little bit more, uh, I don't want to say present day. I know it was 2004, but yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah, definitely. It's so nice to put on a modern show where you can play teenagers as yeah. teenagers. It makes it so much easier, yeah, but yeah. it also makes you more able to relate with your character. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I played Tevya in Fiddler on the Roof, and mm-hmm. one thing I've been saying is, like, this show, I don't have to get kicked out by Russians or, like, <laughs> yeah. my daughters. Yeah. Like, it's, it's more fun for us, too, and I think that makes the audience have a lot more fun. And it's definitely important to learn these classic shows like Fiddler and get to put them on. But it, again, like I said, it's just something different, and it's it's really yeah. fun. What is it like to uh, that first weekend? Like you know, you do this in front of you know a bunch of empty <laughs> seats for all this time, and you know, in in back Four rooms five. and all that stuff, and all this practice, and then you go in front of the audience for the first time. What's that feeling? It's so nerve wracking. It's live theater, of course. So if something goes wrong, you just got to roll with the punches. Yeah. Um, and I know like before. For every show, I get super nervous, but as soon as I get on there, I'm supported by my whole cast, and it's such a team effort that it honestly, all the nerves go away by the second scene. Yeah, I mean, all the nerves. Yeah, no, all the nerves. Like, <laughs> Most of them. Like, I mean, and things obviously go wrong. Like on Saturday, we have these two barn doors as part of our set, and one of them fully just fell off the track. But <laughs> oh, it's it's the magic of the art form, and that's yeah. why we love it because it so it keeps us on our feet. 100. Improvise a little bit, but. And I think the interesting thing about doing it for an audience for the first time is we don't know what will be funny to them yes. or what will be exciting yeah. to them. And this probably it, is a lot of comedy yeah. in this one, if I remember it's, that. Oh, movie. 100%. Yeah. It's so yeah. funny. And people, I don't think, even understand how often, like, we've put on this show, even just for ourselves, probably upwards of 20 times at this point. We've at rehearsed least. it so much. Yeah. So getting to do it in front of the audience for the first time, that just keeps us on our feet. We can't get bored performing no. it. And, you know, a few opening night glitches but overall big ovations and all that stuff yeah 100% we had over 300 people on Friday and I believe almost 300 people on Saturday huge audiences we feel this is the most full I've ever seen the auditorium for a performance ever Mm -hmm. which is incredible to feel yeah what is the uh, I remember talking to some even professional theater people before in my life who've said like you know when you're doing comedy it is a little bit different because one thing that people don't understand is even you know you can have a joke but you got to know how to deliver the joke too, right. which is, I mean, comedians go through that all the time and they master their art, yeah. but you guys have to learn that too. Like the art of delivering mm-hmm. the punchline, right? Right. Yeah. Exactly. And people don't even realize, but comedy is actually in the industry. It's referred to as harder to put on than a more serious show because you have to like nail it perfectly. Yeah. And it doesn't always nail perfectly. Like on the contrary no. to what I said, some things I thought were going to be hilarious didn't <laughs> land as well. No. But yeah. man, that's just, we each get to put our own spin on these roles. I wonder if you get like, you know, it's just like any comedy show you ever go to. I bet maybe a different audience, maybe you get different reactions too, which yeah. will be interesting 100%. to Definitely. see as you go. Our uh, audience on Saturday was so incredibly lively. It might have been smaller, but it was people were yeah, like wooing kids, from yeah. the crowd and yes. laughing and <laughs> laughing so loud. Like, the energy was so good in that room. Gotcha. Very cool. Again, uh, Declan Hawkeyes are here and Lizzie Homer. They're part of Legally Blonde, the high school musical over at uh, Newburyport High. You've got a few more chances to check it out here over the next few days into the weekend. So go do that. If you can, you can just walk up and get tickets, right? Yes. Yes, you can. Walk right up. So go get showtime to, go get your showtime info and jump in there. Go find a show that fits your schedule because <laughs> uh, these kids work hard. Um, is it... I think sometimes people, get, like you said, people don't realize how much work goes into these things. Um, would you call it a grind getting there, all these rehearsals and all that? Or is it is it joy to kind of go through it? Like, you lo- love that process. It's a, it's a good balance. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot. We have the longest rehearsals, the two weeks leading up. It's from the end oh of God. the school day to 8 p.m. And then the following week is the end of the school day to 10 p.m. And those are the longest stretches, the hardest things to do. But it's so yeah. fun getting to be with all your friends. And we get through it together. Like, it's... Yeah. It's people are like, oh my god, you have to stay until ten. It's terrible, and it definitely is exhausting. But um, you like having dinner together and all yeah. that yes, stuff. Yes, yeah, it's so okay. fun. Like Parents family organized. dinner. Yeah, yeah. No, it, one big happy family. Right, exactly. <laughs> we we try, but <laughs> it, it, it is a community, and we all get through it together. So it really is fun. Yeah. Bad. yeah. What do you do like when people, whether it be sickness or whatever, somebody has something going on? How do you? Do you I, I obviously at a high, the high school level, you don't have like backups for these roles. How do you? How do you get through a rehearsal when somebody skips out? 
our lovely stage manager, Charlotte Zell. We have three stage managers, but one of them likes to step in for oh, yeah. some understudy sure. roles. Charlotte genuinely enjoys it. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> she is so funny with it's, it. She loves it's it. Really funny. Um, <laughs> That's cool. So we actually do have a couple actors that either aren't able to make one of the shows or had to step out last minute. So we do have some last minute understudies in the show. Um, but yeah, again, that's just the joy of the art is that it's so yeah. unpredictable and, and we all got to get through it together. Yeah, we how, figure it out. How many shows did you do last weekend? Two. So you two, have five in total. So you did two. Did yeah. you, um, when I was kind of hinting at like maybe the audience is being different, were they, did they feel like two different shows or did you feel like you just ran it back? I don't, I mean, I guess when we're up there, it's harder to tell. It is. Yeah. But my mom, my mom went and saw both shows last weekend and she was saying how, it really depends. The audience, like, we feed off of each other. Mm-hmm. So our show is different depending on how the audience is enjoying it. So, I okay. think every show is different and alike in its own ways. Of course, it's the same story. But, yeah. again, with live theater, mistakes can happen. And that's sure. just how it's going to – it might change it a little bit, but not mm-hmm. the actual storyline. So. Mm-hmm. You know, I was telling the story here one day. I had to introduce a, um, a, a band that had come on this show. Mm-hmm. had asked that I introduce them over at the firehouse. Mm-hmm. And it was, like, coming out of covid like I don't get nervous about the radio. I can talk in front of and you know kids in person. I do, but for some reason, like coming out of COVID, I hadn't been on stage in a long time, and I jumped on and like I just wasn't used to those lights. You know that. Yeah. Like, and I, I was I was oh geez I haven't felt that in a while and you know I was like uh, nervous. You know I was like I can't. That's strange. You know you can fight through and see the audience a little bit and that feeling of like okay well I should have uh, rehearsed what I was going to say more. You know. Like, <laughs> I thought, but um, you know I obviously fought my way through it but it's like uh, it is that feeling of those stage lights on you that's kind of a uh, I guess it's an adrenaline kick too uh, 100% <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, what's that like when you, you tell people about that just for a bit you have your own kind of feelings when you get out there for the first time yeah I mean the lights are a blessing and a curse I mean it helps <laughs> you block out the audience if you feel like you need to dial it in and maybe forget if you have stage fright um, because they can but, they don't blind you but you know they, 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 they blind us they, yeah. <laughs> they always say in terms of like finding your light because not obviously the whole stage isn't lit the whole time there's smaller lights and they say if you're not being blinded then you're not in your light oh what do they call it finding your light finding your light because mm-hmm. the, okay. the light cues our lighting crew designs these cues and they run through them every show and we have to make sure we're hitting our marks on stage to make sure that we're lit properly oh so we okay find our light. so I guess I found the light because I couldn't see the audience when I introduced that bear <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was I thinking I could I would have liked a little eye contact. I was like, where are the humans? So, yeah. Um, I don't know. Do you feel like that sometimes? Do you want some more? Do you, do, you, do you sometimes drift out of the light to get some interaction? Or no? That's a no-no. I like try not to. One of my numbers in this show, I'm frozen for a solid two minutes just <laughs> facing out the audience, and I'm trying to like not scout out certain people because I'm uh, going to be like, yeah. let me think about that the whole time. I know. I feel like that makes me more scared if I see yeah. people I know Ooh. in the audience. <laughs> if I know people in right the now. audience, <laughs> um, I like freak out because I feel like I need to perform more for them. Yeah. Um, so I try to avo- avoid looking at the audience. We have a balcony in our auditorium, and there's like a golden ring. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's the ring of fire. The golden ring of fire. I aim to look at that every performance because I'm not making eye contact with people in the first row, but I'm still looking out into okay. the audience. Yeah. All right. Very cool. That was a good job. So you dropped the phone. You just continued on like nothing happened. <laughs> that was a good little insight into there you uh, go. how you get through. What do you? I think I feel like I ask everybody in theater this, and I think sometimes they like roll their eyes, but I do know it happens. Yeah. Like the whole thing thing about it's a lot of lines to memorize Absolutely. Like, you must especially doing this thing like multiple times here over a couple of weeks like you must forget your lines at some point or at least it does happen it, it does happens. happen <laughs> who wants that one <laughs> i mean i think like typically we're able to get over it because our scene part our scene partners are able to kind of help us along with it. hundred percent. I think my worst experience was with that is last year we did a show called Tartuffe and it was all in verse, which has rhyming lines. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, which was a blessing and a curse because if I wasn't sure what my next line was, I should be like, oh, it rhymes with my last one. But okay. if you mess up one, you gotta make up a rhyme. So yeah. <laughs> I did have to do that a couple times. Yep. But in this show, it's all conversational. It's not like this is a story about real people. Yeah. So it's like we can okay. kind of make up if we need to. I can yeah. see that being a bad one, though. You yeah. got one of those? Uh, no, my role this year has much more singing lines oh. independently than actual talking lines. Um, so luckily, I don't have that much of a problem. But 
yeah, you usually know the show roughly, so you can come up with something that's generally right. Yes. Okay. Um, Ad lib a little bit. Uh, that's kind of a big. That is kind of a lesson, isn't it? For like, don't try to go like line by line and yeah. memorize every word. They try to get the bigger general picture of the whole thing, right? Yeah. 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 For the most part, yeah. Feel the story, sort of thing. Um, that's cool. What you mentioned, like your cast members can get you out of trouble sometimes. Is there? Is that just they pick up the line and kind of steer you to it? They, again, it depends on the scene <laughs> and yeah. who we're working with. Um, but typically, they're good at helping you out. Either they'll. You're supposed to yell at me. Yell at me. No. <laughs> no, they'll just like, they'll just move this story along. Gotcha. And yeah. we're all there for each other. And that's, again, that's the big community aspect of it is we're all trying to put on this show together. Okay. Yeah. Um, singing parts, whole different ball game too. Whole different part. Yeah. Yeah. So many <laughs> harmonies in this show, especially with my role as the Greek chorus for everything we sing. Each one of us, there's three people in the Greek chorus and each one of us has a different harmony we have to sing. So you can't really depend on your partner to help you find your notes. You gotta know them. Yeah. And the three of them gotta nail it. My my parts are a lot easier though. <laughs> no no but, singing for you? No, I... I, I, I I dabble, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, but it's all it's all either just me, so I can make up whatever if I need to, or right. yeah, or I'm singing in a big group. Yeah, the singing sense. part that would that is something I've never really had to do in front of a big crowd. <laughs> Campfires, yes, big crowds, no. I feel like that's the uh, how does the like what is the microphone situation? So we have each of us, or every, most people have head mics. Yeah, we have a couple god mics that pick up everyone's sound but it's on it's such a small auditorium gotcha. that it's not really necessary that's what we, i was curious i didn't even know if you were just singing to the auditorium we do have a 13 piece band so okay. we definitely do need mics and yes. even with the mics people were saying they weren't really sure if they could hear us okay. super well give us more volume yeah so yeah. we try we have an awesome sound crew yeah that yeah. make sure you want to name drop you can name drop uh casper norfley and ashagre basely i believe is the last yes. name two of them are killing it cool yeah that is big the, the yeah. uh Bad sound can ruin shows, so. Yeah. Not this <laughs> yeah. one. No, not this one. Well, hey, knock on wood there, my friend. You never know. Gremlins kick in. <laughs> Again, Declan Hawkeyes are joining us. Lizzie Homer, uh, they're doing Legally Blonde at Newburyport High School here uh, tonight in the next few days. Go check out a show over there. Easy to balance all this with homework and life? No. No. <laughs> Okay, fair enough. Moving on. Junior, <laughs> junior is such a struggle in yeah. terms of preparing for college and making sure you're in these rigorous classes. So yeah. I'm taking all honors and three APs for classes, and my grades have definitely struggled mm. during this time where we're at school for such mm. long amounts of time. Okay, but. Very honest. You didn't have to admit all that short. <laughs> it's all right. That was, that was, I'm not going to talk about the grades. But, oh. um, it was honestly it was a lot easier when we were underclassmen because – they were actually they were all really good at helping us out like with our homework and stuff but now our teachers are a little bit more they're like no you can just do it and right it's a, we get through it we're good you're getting fewer breaks yeah, is that what you're getting saying fewer breaks yeah. fewer less love for the theater guys. yeah but i mean the two of us were in a lot of the same classes so we kind of worked through it together yeah, yeah. What, um, how about you? You mentioned it's kind of easier as underclassmen. Is it, I'm assuming you have to serve some like leadership roles here? Is like we said, it's a team sport theater, right? It's like, yeah. you're, uh, what's that been like? So, the show is led by our stage managers, mm -hmm. except for the teachers, of course, and they kind of organize everything down the line in the sense of the community aspect. The seniors kind of, so not us yet, next year we will. Mm -hmm. The seniors kind of lead everything in terms of like family outings and warming up, mm -hmm. um, but all the students kind of play their part. And yeah. we've definitely, we've actually made some really good relationships with underclassmen this year. That Absolutely. We, hopefully, we get to foster the positive community for years to come. Yeah. Nice. Well said. Is there any um, underclassmen that have just, like, kind of surprised you? Like, wow, they play that role. Absolutely. Fantastic. Absolutely. Rory Kelly and Lily Curtis, they're both freshmen that came up from the middle school, and they absolutely Kelly, blow me yeah. away with their mm -hmm. talent. They both got... Um, Lead, pretty yeah. leading roles yeah and they kill it with their voices their singing is so good yeah. um one exciting thing about our department is that they really don't focus on seniority <coughs> in the sense of like you don't just get a lead because you're a senior yeah. like i both of us got really large parts when we're underclassmen mm -hmm. and that's helped me now in my i guess like objectively smaller roles in these shows yeah and it's just nice to see freshmen that are so nervous, but they're doing so well, and <laughs> I'm so proud so of them. Well. Yeah, do you see the nerves? Yeah. yeah. 100%. Yeah. And, but, yeah. I mean, we've kind of taken the role of helping them get over those, because at the end of the day, 
we want to put on a great show, but it's not really the end of the world. This is so much fun. Yeah. yeah. And the more fun that they have and the less nervous they are, then the better it comes across. Did you notice on a whole most of them had fun the other day? Was it? Uh, yeah. Or, ooh, I think I, I think we have fans. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, was it mostly that? Uh, I mean, I'm sure there's a level of relief too, right? I mean, it's like, oh, well, thank goodness I got through that first one. The second one will be so much easier, but. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. It gets easier with more time. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Um, when you're talking about uh, junior year and colleges and all that stuff, are you guys doing uh, thinking theater for college or? No, I don't think so. I don't think you are either. But not for college, but okay. maybe some sort of public speaking communications mm. aspect, but not centered in musical theater. Radio. Yeah. You're going to do radio. Um, yeah. Who knows? <laughs> Wherever yeah. it takes me. I remember that was one of the. In, they have a, at least my school had a public speaking course in college, yeah. <laughs> and I remember her saying. To this day, I remember it. I t- whenever I t- uh, speak to kids, I say this is I, one of the things that my public speaking teacher told me. This is the. Uh, second biggest fear in the world, uh, next yeah. next to dying. Yeah, um, public, no, it's, public it's speaking. It's real scary, I know. Yeah. But yeah, I don't think either of us are really planning to go on the theater path after this. But I think at least I know for me, and I'm sure for you too, we'll both be very thankful we had this experience. A hundred percent. Getting to meet these people, and I like I love th- I've always loved theater, and I always will love theater. I was going to say, when do you kind of get that uh, itch to do it? Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry. Like five years old, like you want to do it at five years um, old, like ten years old. Like I, I don't know. started doing shows in third or fourth grade. Mm. Yeah, it was I've, never super serious, but it was always just a love. Yeah, I've always been involved with theater. There's a camp theater in the open here in Newburyport, oh, in yeah. Monsley State Park, that I've been doing since I was like six. Oh, you do that? Um, yeah, it's, it's so great. I did that every summer, but I didn't start actually doing shows till middle school. So that makes you both feel more comfortable as you kind of get older yeah. and yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> for a while. <laughs> yeah, old hat, right? Do you? Uh, because I, I guarantee you there's people out there that probably see your shows, kids maybe even younger than you that are like would be interested in doing it, but are probably just nervous as hell and they just don't want to yeah. do it. Yeah. Yeah. Which is sad. What would you say to those kids? Because it's, I mean, I'm, it's probably if you can just get yourself in the mix a little bit, you can work yourself through it, right? There are so many people there to support you. And yeah. if that's what you want to do and you know in your heart that's what you want to do, then go ahead and do it because there's nothing worse than not trying. Yeah. So just going ahead and trying it is the best you can do. That's very good advice. I think another thing is just like there are so many different ways to get involved in these shows. Mm-hmm. Like if you have terrible stage fright, obviously I want you to push yourself and try it out. But if you really don't think you can, our crew is awesome. Mm-hmm. You can become a stage manager. You can work on the set. Like it. Like if you want to be even just around these people, you yeah, can, and find a way to do what you love, even if it's not your career. Do have you? Do people make that jump? Like if there's somebody who's like, I just kind of want to be on the team. Like let me, uh, I think I could be a good like, you know, help around the set, and do, and then like, you know what? I can make. I kind of want to be a part of it, and then they jump on to the stage. Has that happened? Yeah, yeah. I think there are a good chunk of people that um, that switch around. I mean, I did it reverse. I was the stage manager for our show in the fall, Curious Incident, The Dog in the Nighttime. And I probably want to stay on stage next year, but it was a super cool experience getting to see the other half of it. Yeah. And they really do encourage trying new things. And well, it's, Absolutely. It's probably good to know how the whole process works, right? Yeah. It just helps yeah. you be a better like, performer, too. Yeah. It gives me like a whole just new view on what I've been doing for so long. What was your biggest surprise doing the behind-the-scenes stuff? Um, I guess, honestly, as stage manager, how much I was responsible for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I didn't really realize that. Yeah. But it was really cool getting to learn, like, how to use the light board and, like, the soundboard and, like, all the tech stuff that I hadn't known how to do. Yeah. And now I not only have such an increased respect for these people, I just have a more general understanding. Yeah. Which I believe has helped me on stage. That is cool. Very, yeah, I like that. I'm glad we talked about that. Yeah. Um, so these final shows, is there something, uh, like... I imagine when you first start a show, you just probably a couple of things that like, do you make changes along the way or do, is there like maybe something didn't work? Maybe one of, one of your jokes that you thought, <laughs> do you make any changes to it or do you kind of just uh, trust the script, I guess? Oh, we don't change the script at all. That's not because yeah. we get the rights to the show and we have to stick to those. Any changes whatsoever as far as like uh, how you deliver a line, where you stand, where you... Definitely in terms of blocking, we change that around all the time. All Good throughout um, Tech Week, we change scenes. Even the day right before, like, like literally a few before hours on, before yeah. the first show, we completely changed another scene because it was just awkward. Yep. And we opened it up and it turned out to be so much better. Um, but 
Who definitely. Are, who officially makes that call? The, the director okay. still would. Yeah. Gotcha. Do you, if you said something though, like if you jumped in and said, uh, "I think I should stand back two steps here because of this," they'd probably listen to you, right? Yeah, I mean, on like <laughs> maybe honestly, like you can just go for it. You totally have the right to make yeah. a character choice in that moment, and then if they see it and they don't like it, they'll tell you and they'll change that. But yeah. honestly, you can do whatever you'd like on the stage as you think fits your character, um, and if they like it, then they're so supportive of yeah. that choice that they, you made. They really want us to lead the show ourselves along like with their guidance more so than their direction. Yeah. And especially as upperclassmen in these larger roles, like they allow us to kind of take the reins a little bit and try stuff because at the end of the day, like we're the ones performing, mm-hmm. like we're creating these characters for ourselves and they yeah. want us to be part of the process in that way too. What is the strength of this particular set of uh, directors with this show legally blonde uh what's what has been the kind of what has really helped you guys along be the best you can be so the two of them phil and z have been working together for i believe 18 years oh, okay gosh, that's a yeah. long time yeah. they are just such a dynamic duo they're both pretty different people i would say at Super their core. People. <laughs> and i love them both so much and the yeah. two of them they're just they're so experienced in their field like first off 100%. Like, that's a given like they both have seen a lot of theater, done a lot of theater, been in and directed. Yeah. So, like, that's without a doubt. And the two of them, they they love all of us. Yeah. And all they want is for a good show. And, yeah, Phil has especially helped us in terms of movement and blocking. So those characters and people that don't know what choices they should make, Phil has been so helpful in helping give direction towards people who need to... Um, figure out how they move in a scene or what to do with their arms. Mm. Um, mm. The little stuff that you don't usually think about. The little things. What's your favorite parts of the show individually? Do you uh, both have a part that you... Uh, it doesn't even have to be a part you're involved in. Is there a part that like brings this show to life for you? I really like one of Lizzie's first songs. It's called oh, Positive. Really? How about that? Huh? It's <laughs> devastating to me that I can't be in this number. Because <laughs> it's just the three Greek chorus girls. Cause, but it's such a good song. Yeah, and we get a little rap. Her, along with Rory Kelly and Courtney Metzdorf, who play Margot and Pilar, Pilar respectively. Yeah. Okay. Um, the two of them, the three of them, just kill it. And I wish I was in that it's number. It's such a fun number. I think my favorite number to watch from backstage is "Gay or European." Um, it is such a yeah. fun one, and it. It is just like so lively, and mm. just the characters within the scene are so funny, and I crack up every time I watch it. <laughs> yeah. And that, I'm, I am in that song along with um, my legal team. It takes place in the court, <laughs> um, and it's Elle's first like big discovery as a lawyer. Yeah. Um, for lack of a better explanation, <laughs> and we've always knew it was like one of the funniest songs in the show, but the audience was like freaking out the whole time yeah, yeah. and it made us like it's this show it's it's camp i guess that's such <laughs> what i would call it like so we were just having so much fun with that number so i agree yeah. it's so it's spring now you're gonna finish as we enter spring you're gonna finish the show up after all this work that started around the holidays yeah, yeah. which must be kind of crazy to even think back on right it's so like, insane, this was like yeah. christmas when we were going through all this um how, what is it what's now i mean you guys get busy with like well i'm assuming proms are coming up and yeah all the prom and next week and <laughs> what, whatever else junior year in titles like do we is there another play or would, it's, does it move towards so we do two shows a year okay um they like to they used to do five shows a year um, in COVID. The department kind of settled down a little, a little bit. bit. We're, we're, <laughs> make, we're making our way back up there. Yeah. Okay. Next year we might end up doing three. We're not. So don't. I, mean, I won't hold you just, to just it. Just an okay. idea that they yeah. tossed around. Um, obviously, we got to get back to school. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, they'll do a festival probably, or maybe even some student directed shows. Yeah, and, and then... we perform in a bunch of different places even after the show is over. I think there was some talking about performing at Six Flags this year. You'll and... take Legally Blonde to these different... So we'll take a uh, number from Legally Blonde okay. to the stage at Six Flags. The Waterfront and then Festival. Waterfront Festival oh. here in Newburyport. And um, we have another kind of festival thing called Inferno Fest where in mm-hmm. the same 24 hours students write a script and then send it off to student directors which will then instruct small groups of um, student performers um, and then they'll perform it um, at like what like 5 p.m. that yeah. night of and oh, okay. it's, it's 
It's very fun. It's chaotic. Cool. It's fun. Like, it's last year after Fiddler on the Roof, me and um, Kate Pomeroy, who played my wife um, in the show, we kind of went. We called it a Fiddler press tour because we ended up having to sing at like all these events. <laughs> so the the magic of the show is not gone. Yeah, yeah. which will be performing the. Fall. That must be kind of fun and rewarding, though. It's like here's a little yeah. bit of what you missed. You know, yeah. Yeah. we got to the point where I was saying, if I was a rich man, like eight times, I'm like, oh, oh man, man, I can imagine that. <laughs> but maybe, but um, talking about an earworm, right? Yeah. Just the, the, how, when did you get rid of that after months and months? Or? It's still there. <laughs> it's like a parasite. It's just... Legally blonde didn't help you get rid of it, huh? No. Nope. No, that is funny. Well, <laughs> congr- love, though. <laughs> congratulations on a uh, such a uh, great work that goes into these things. And I know you already had a great start to this uh, show, and you'll have a great weekend run here and finish strong. And uh, Devlin Hawkeyser, Lizzie Homer, um, go check them out. People can walk up and get tickets. They're, uh, I don't know, do you want to t- say how much they cost? Or uh, They're $10 and $15 depending on where you sit in the theater. Okay. Um, we have posters pretty much everywhere downtown. Yep, and um, in the plaza. Code. Yeah. Okay. And we have banners too. There's a QR Oh, with code. QR codes? You can just with scan the them? Link. You can buy them in oh, advance cool. or you can buy them at the door Okay. Um, about 30 minutes before the show. Okay, cool. Get them in advance though. We want to make them sell this place out, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it is more fun when you get a great crowd, right? Yeah. It's more nerve wracking and, and it's more fun in, in general. Uh, Dan, uh, Declan, Lizzie, thank you guys so much. Um, Maeve Power producing the show. Thank you, Maeve. Maya Gassman, Ryan Rothberg, Sarah Hayden, our small but mighty team here in Newburyport. Thank you guys so much as always. Go check these two out Declan and Lizzie, Newburyport High School Theater, Legally Blonde, going on for a few nights, a few more nights. Go have fun and uh, go see the show. All right. Live at Truth House, Shop Afternoon Drive. We'll see you next time. Peace. Peace.